What's up everyone? Welcome to the channel. Today I'm watching Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood episode 26. So we're at a really, really fantastic point in the show where things are really ramping up and, and the story is really starting to unfold a little bit while still presenting even more questions than before. So we're faced with three, maybe even four uh, big immediate plot points right now. Uh, the two biggest ones are obviously Ed and Ling facing off against Envy right now inside Gluttony's defective portal of truth, which Envy described as a place between reality and truth. And then we have Gluttony going off to presumably have Gluttony introduce Al to Father, which I'm incredibly nervous about. I'm not going to lie. I I'm sure I do have opinions about how I feel like that's going to go, but it's something I almost don't want to think about. It's just such a such a, it's just going to be such a weird situation so we'll see if that even actually happens and the other two uh, points that we have going on is bradley's whole kind of trump against roy having his crew separated and having hawkeye become his new personal assistant pretty much acting as a constant threat to roy now that bradley is aware of the fact that roy knows he is a homunculus and then we have Scar, Mei, and Yoki, who are on the lookout for Xiao Mei, who is currently with Al. And I do want to just briefly go back to the whole Yoki, Scar, and Mei thing. You know, Mei's deal is she wants to meet uh, Ed, the full Metal Alchemist, and she's trying to find immortality as well. Yoki obviously has his own vendetta against Ed and Al. And Scar is obviously, you know, he, he's Scar. But right now he's focused on helping Mei. Um, and originally I thought they were all going to meet in Central, but right now what is happening is Al and Gluttony are on their way to Central. With Scar, Mei and Yoki looking for Xiao Mei who is with Al, perhaps they'll meet in Central and something will go on. But we'll have to see what really happens with that. I think the focus might be on uh, the whole Ed and Ling uh, trying to, you know, defeat Envy and get out of this portal, which honestly I have absolutely no idea how they're going to get out at this point. I think it's going to have to be something to do with Al because he's with Gluttony. Maybe they'll meet Father and there'll be some way. Or perhaps maybe, this has only just popped into my, my mind now, perhaps they manage to defeat Envy, take Envy's Philosopher's Stone, and they can do something with that. We'll have to see. Oh, and thank you to those of you in the comments who have pointed out the whole ordeal behind Ed's comment from the last episode about Envy destroying his hometown. Apparently, that's just a detail that was in the manga that they've left out uh, here in the show up to this point. Which I feel pretty good about knowing that I, I wasn't actually missing any details. It seemed like a pretty important thing. So I guess you could say it is a bit of an error, unless they bring it up later in the show, which I'm not sure if they do. And I also want to point out some of you saying Link could potentially be diabetic based on his diet and his, you know, his sudden collapses that he's been experiencing. I just thought that was a cool detail. It doesn't sound like, based on what you guys have said, that it's confirmed, but it's just a cool little detail, you know, that, that there are so many details like this that the community have really thought about in, in terms of the show, about stuff not being confirmed. Like when I mentioned a while ago about Roy possibly being from Xing, and a lot of people were saying, no, the community have really debated that perhaps Roy has some uh, Xingyese ancestry, if you will, which is really cool, even if it's not canon or not confirmed at all by the show, the fact that you know, the, the fans in the community really talk and think about all this stuff. It is really cool to me. Anyway, I'm really excited for this. It's probably going to be another banger. They've just been all great episodes lately. Can't wait to see what happens in this one. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, episode 26. Okay, we're straight into it. I'm really curious to see how this goes. Hey. Okay, Ling. Ling really does be moving, though. Hey! Oh, that's that's not good. I don't know how they take all these beatings. Time to die. Are we thinking that? Kill me. Help me die. I beg you. What does this mean? This is terrifying, by the way. Ah! That's not okay. Are these perhaps all the souls in the Philosopher's Stone or something? I don't know. It's just really unsettling. Okay, Ling. Ling doesn't care. Ling's doing what needs to be done. I don't know how he's still standing. Oh. Yeah. It hits him hard. Come on, man. 
Bloody hell, that would be so overwhelming. Jesus. Don't! Just fucking don't, man. Yeah, that would mess him up. Why does Nina keep popping up, man? That's a crazy shot. Ow! And you gotta focus up, though, man. I get it, but you gotta focus up. What is that? Hello? Is that part of that? We've seen this. Oh my god. Right, Ling is gonna step in here. That's terrifying, though. Oh no, he's in trouble, too. There's just no way! Reunion. What does that mean? Okay, where are we now? Oh, this little cat? <laughs> I saw one that looked just like it by the factory earlier. I thought it seemed like a weird pet for a guy in a suit of armor to have. <laughs> oh my god. The, her images of Ed and Al are so wrong. It's so funny. What? Okay, this is going to be interesting. Obviously, they're going to want to fight. You see that fat one? That's the homunculus. Heard them call him a homunculus. And seeing Al with a homunculus is probably not a good look for them. I just want everyone to be on the same page here. It's not a fair fight. Yeah. Are they going under to where Father is right now? May doesn't care. Yeah, that's the question, though, from Scar's point of view. You can understand that. Yeah, we're going under. There's something wrong. Dude, if Scar and May go as well... Can she... Sh can, excuse me. Yeah, can she sense things in this... Yeah, the same way that Link can. Oh. That's crazy. I wonder if Xiaomei can pick up on it as well. Al is so kind to the animals. This is this interaction is crazy. This gluttony is just so chill about it with Al. Oh my god. This is the sound effect that scared me. Hey, what's with all that? Huh? Oh. The gatekeepers did all that. The gatekeepers. The gatekeepers. They won't rip you up as long as you're with me. Huh? Uh. Oh shit. Wait. That's so cool. Just pretend they aren't Are they like chimeras or something? Do we have much further? Not too far. It's just ahead. Th this is happening a lot quicker than I thought it was going to. I don't know if I'm ready for this. Brother. I know you're still alive. Just hang on. Okay, I immediately forgot this happened. What is going on with this? So now he's inside gluttony, inside envy. You gotta wake up, man. What is this? The Philosopher's Stone. What is that? Oh. Stone. I almost forgot. After all my searching. It's right there, man. It's right here. In front of me. Wonder if he can destroy Envy if he snaps out of it. I did see that. What does that mean? Yep, it's from that. That's what I remember. Ooh. Okay, he, he's realized something, I think. Oh. Oh, hold on. My brain's working, but I can't quite put things together. Okay, these are the gatekeepers. Wait, they look so cool. No match for Scar and May. Oh, dear. But I love these two working together. Yeah, they are all chimeras. Okay. Oh my god! Let's go, May! They make a good team, man. They make a great team. Damn, it's really affecting her. Hmm. 
Mm. Okay, this is. Yep. Hohenheim. Someone's come to find me. Look at him. There's still a lot of mystery around him. Even though we're made to assume that it's Hohenheim, no? What is this? For all I know, I might have been abandoned or sold before I Oh, this is so interesting. Now which one of you will be the one to step forward and lead this country? They call those prospective viewers. They train Oh, viewers. oh so it was this deep? We studied political science and humanities. Oh, this is so interesting. Arts, firearms, and of course, swordsmanship. <laughs> so was he actually a human? Oh shit. Don't worry. His only true purpose in life was to help you further achieve your goal. I was certain that I would be the one chosen to lead this country. Oh my god. Are they trying to make a homunculus out of all these candidates? The way the blood pooled was very interesting. Oh my god. Maybe with the Philosopher's Stone, right? To make- ooh, what is that? That must be, like, it could take many forms, right? The Philosopher's Stone? That's him. Yeah, this is exactly what they're doing. So oh, the Jesus. Stone is created from the life force of countless human beings and contains their souls. Countless. Injected into the bloodstream. Maybe it is a lot. Take over its new host and the human body tries to reject it. My body was repeatedly destroyed from the inside. Jesus. Out, built by the stone. The only options I had were to die or to overcome its power. That is wild. Congratulations. You have been chosen to lead mankind down the path of destiny. Mm. Everything has been arranged to provide you with all that you will need. I would love to talk about this, I think. King Bradley. Wow. Countless souls have battled the dominant. Did he just tell Roy all of that? And only the most wrathful ones survived. I can't tell you if this remaining soul was one of those within the Philosopher's Stone. Or if it's the one I carried since I was born. That's I heavy. I'll ever know. You lived your life before as a human being. Yeah. You choose to be a homunculus, sir. Isn't you didn't have a choice. You could go back. You suggest I become human again? Ridiculous. Just as you humans take great pride in your humanity, misguided though that may be, I too am proud. Uh. I collected all the fragments that I could find. Oh, NB. Okay. Wow. All from Xerxes. That's right. They're pieces of a large mural from what remains of their temple. Okay, I, I, I'm not a big fan of pausing during the episode, but I just feel like I need to get some of this out uh, in case I forget. Um, first of all, really, really cool that they went from fighting each other to like Ed going, "Well, I might have a way out of here," and to NB like working with him, like, "Okay, we, we all need to work together to get out of here." So he's seen a piece of that mural, right, which we have seen before. I could be wrong about this, but perhaps for the first time in the fifth laboratory, and then again at Xerxes, which is what they're saying now. So I'm thinking about how in the world this has gotten here. Oh, because they said something came through, right, and destroyed Xerxes, right, in one night. Is that what happened? So perhaps it was Gluttony, and he's taken it, he's eaten everything, and that's why this stuff is here. But this might be some sort of connection to getting them out. I just, I just really felt like I had to get this stuff out. When I saw the ruins of the mural up close, I thought it was identical to the transmutation circle from the fifth laboratory. Yeah, okay, okay. And they used to create philosophers. So they're different. But it's actually different. Okay. The sun represents the soul. Well, the moon symbolizes the mind. And then there's the stone canvas of the mural. This represents the body. Slow down. Okay. Try to keep it simple. Okay? Uh, it, that's what I'm saying, Ling. I'm trying to take all this in. It was a summoning circle for human transmutation. Hmm. Well, I think I do. Is it used to bring back dead people? Not quite. You can't transmute a life form from a soul that no longer exists in this world. Okay. Trust me on that one. I can't transmute the dead. But 
What would happen if I transmute myself? What? A living person can use this transmutation circle to deconstruct myself. And construct and myself back together. Wow. Transmutation, and it'll open the portal. Oh! You said that gluttony is a defective portal. That's human transmutation. That if we pass through the real portal, then we'll wind up in our own reality. Wait, that's wild. I'll open up the real portal, and then you two jump through it. What happens if it goes wrong? My mind is racing. Rebound. I'm not gonna act like I know anything about alchemy. This is all yours. Hey, Envy. I've got something else that I wanted to ask you. <laughs> the partial mural I saw in Xerxes. It would have looked more or less like this. The symbol for God is written upside down. Hmm. Beneath it is the two-headed dragon. The alchemic symbol for a complete life form. This basically translates to I will strike God to earth and become a perfect being. Well, that's what? an arrogant concept. Must be a Hohenheim thing. This piece takes it to the next level. An image of the lion swallowing the sun, symbolizing the Philosopher's Stone. Hmm. Philosopher's Stone is made with living humans. Isn't that correct, Envy? Yeah, that's right. How could a nation as advanced as Xerxes fall, let alone in a single night? Hmm. These stone fragments of the mural, you put them here to hide the evidence. Oh. You killed them. You sacrificed all of Xerxes, all of Xerxes to make a philosopher's, into a philosopher's stone. And just, oh. And those are the people in envy. Okay, it makes sense now. Oh, this is, this is it. Of a whole country. I think we know. Who created all of you? Who's trying to make himself powerful enough to surpass God? That's the guy. It's their father, wasn't it? Tell me. It's Hohenheim. Did they know it's their father, though? Homunculi to try and recreate the destruction of Xerxes here in Amestris, hasn't he? Yes. You get us out of here, and I'll gladly tell you everything. That's Cap. You've spent enough time beating around the bush. I'm tired of waiting for you to. Look at the two different eyes. Hmm. This work. What? Wait. But our body, those are the citizens of Xerxes. Yes. At one time, but their minds and bodies crumbled long ago. Wow. They don't even remember what they looked like when they were alive. Oh, it doesn't matter, Envy. How childish are you? He's human, unlike you. He does. These souls can never go back to being human. You have to use logic if you are to determine what a human is. Don't let your emotions decide. I wonder if there's a lot of truth to that. Damn, this is a crazy shot here. This might not work out for me. If so, you gotta warn people about these guys' plans. I'm not that concerned about a mistress. It's not my country. <laughs> Are you serious? Come on, man. What do you think happens after a mistress? You've got people you love waiting for you, don't you? So just make it back alive and tell them yourself. Damn. I'm sorry. Okay, we're using the souls, not the Philosopher's Stone. I thought that's what Envy was implying. Okay, talk to me. Get ready. This could be wild. What that? He almost looks like he's praying. Hmm. Sacrifice some of the souls. Transmute his body. Long time no see. Too bad this isn't why I planned on opening you again. Oh my god. Jump in it! You better know what you're doing! I'm trusting you! This is wild. Oh! And this is what happened to Ed and Al when they went through the portal. They got deconstructed and reconstructed. I remember now. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's tough. The souls. Oh dear. Okay. Okay. Just let it happen. Holy shit, this is so tough. There it is! It's, it's his arm and his leg! To get your body back, you? So this is it? Your father's on the other side? 
There has to be a way to rescue brother in here. Wait, wait, I was dissociating. Wait, th this is Hohenheim. That's a sick transition. Okay. Okay, we're back here again. There's two. Were there always two portals? What? It's him. It's gonna grab it. Oh, it's Al? Oh, of course! I didn't even. It's Al's whole body! I can only leave with my own soul. I'm sorry, I can't go with you. He needs to bring Al here? But now we know it's Al. Dude, look at his body, it's so malnourished. I don't know what any of those words mean. He said, I'm not done yet. Come on, man. I have crazy chills. Talk to him, man. Look at that. And that's the episode, isn't it? Bro, the way the music, th this outro is so good because the way it comes into scenes like this, like it just it was so sick. Holy shit, it's going to be another long discussion this episode. I apologize in advance. I like, I, I, I cannot wipe this smile off my face right now. Just of all the things that, that have just happened. I'm going to go chronologically through the episode as I have been doing. I can guarantee I'm going to need to go back through the episode and look at things again. Because there was just so much information there and I really did my best to take all of it in. But I was just like Ling when he said, hey, keep it simple, man. I'm, I'm trying to follow. But that was incredible. I think what I'm going to do first of all is get the um, Owl Gluttony, Scar and May stuff out of the way straight away. And then we can get into all of the juicy stuff after that so the owl and gluttony thing has happened so quick i didn't really expect them they're, they're pretty much walking into where father is right now i didn't expect that to happen this quickly and when it did start to move along i started to think maybe okay maybe this is a way for ed envy and link to get back they're making this happen quickly so we can get them out of the portal I'm really enjoying Scar and May together. It's hilarious to me that May has these um, this opinion of uh, of Ed as the Full Metal Alchemist, like this really tall, like like you know she's really got him on a pedestal, um, and now she has this image of Al, who she thinks has stolen Xiao May as this evil robot guy. I don't even think she knows they're related, like they're brothers. Um, but it's going to be really interesting when May actually figures out like who Al and Ed are and what they're actually about. But seeing May and Scar work together, taking down the gatekeepers, the Chimeras, is really cool. They're a great team. Uh, I love seeing them in action. But I really can't wait. I'm sure this will happen eventually. Them all getting on the same page about like who's the enemy here. And, and like we're all trying to do the same thing. The common enemy is obviously like like the homunculi and I guess father and Hohenheim. But it's going to be really interesting because it's Ed and Al's father. And Scar's already done so much. We'll just have to see. And I love that May, just like Ling, can sense, you know, all of the, the horrible things going on in a mistress, and she can sense what's going on uh, down below where Hohenheim is. And I'll talk about the Bradley stuff as well. That was crazy. They're just dumping so much information these last few episodes. Like, the show is just, is completely different. So it seems that Bradley was born a human, along with many others. And now that we know how deep the, the corruption runs, They've taken all of these kids and essentially brainwashed them. It really reminds me of like the the Spartan program from Halo, if that uh, resonates with anyone else. So they've taken them and, and pretty much like trained them and controlled them. They're trying to find someone who can, I guess, survive the Philosopher's Stone and become Wrath, a homunculi for father. And they put some emphasis on 
Bradley being the 12th sacrifice. I'm really, I imagine they've already had the Philosopher's Stone and the Philosopher's Stone has, has killed, you know, the 11 people before, before Bradley. I don't know if it means it's taken in their souls as well, but they did say countless souls make up a Philosopher's Stone. So maybe it is just, an, just like entire nations, like Xerxes, like Ishval, like Amestrets even. But yeah, Bradley was the one who could survive the Philosopher's Stone and he became Wrath. Crazy that he's telling Roy all of this, but I think one of the biggest things he said was when Roy said, would there ever be a way for you to become human? And after Bradley had said, I don't know if the soul I have now is one of the ones that was in the Philosopher's Stone or if it was the one I was born with. And then he said, why would I ever want to go back to being a human? Which is really interesting because he just basically implied that it might not even be his soul saying that. His original soul might want to go back to be, being human, which is something I'm going to try to keep in my mind. Whether or not that comes into play later, we'll have to see. But a lot of you have been saying, and I've already spoken about this, so it's not really changed my mindset or anything about like, keep an eye on Bradley's character, you know. The, the show has obviously been hinting at the fact that he is a little bit deeper than just a homunculus like lust or envy, you know. There's a lot more going on with him. But it's all starting to, to come out now. And, and I did wonder, are all the homunculi created this way? Were they all originally a human and then bound with the Philosopher's Stone? Or were like lust, envy and, and greed and gluttony, pride, sloth all created differently? Because Bradley is different to all of them, like he ages. Like is that because he was a he was actually a human? I'm not entirely sure if they've explained that or not, but that's what it seems like to me. Okay, so we're gonna go through the whole Ed Lust and Ling situation now. I'm gonna do my best, but I can almost guarantee I'm gonna have to go back and look at things um through the episode to, to figure out exactly where I'm at. So Ed and Ling are fighting Envy. So Ed gets a glimpse of the mural from Xerxes. I, I could I could be fuzzy on this, but I think this is implying that only part of the mural still exists in Xerxes and the rest is in here inside Gluttony. And I was just like Ed, my, my first thought was back to the mural from the fifth laboratory. And I, I did remember seeing something similar to that in Xerxes, but I couldn't quite place it. But, but thankfully Ed explained it. So hiding inside of the defective portal in Gluttony here, is you know a bunch of these murals from Xerxes which which Envy has hidden inside of Gluttony to hide the evidence of what happened was it so it was Envy that came through and destroyed Xerxes not Hohenheim it was Envy okay I was just going through the episode and I've made a significant connection I think so I'm at the point where I think I'll put it on, I think I'll try to put it on the screen here, actually. Here we go. So is this the mural from Xerxes, right? And then if I go back to the original opening, it's the same thing, man. It's the same thing. What does that mean? I don't actually know. It's the same mural from the opening. I see what you guys are saying now about the openings, right? Like. We would have had no way to know about this, like what this means or anything, because we haven't been to Xerxes to see this or s seen this episode yet. Wow. I can't even remember what I was talking about now. I was just going through the episode and I saw this and I thought I've seen this before because I use it as the damn thumbnail for my opening reaction. <laughs> I think that just means there is a lot of emphasis on this thing. And Ed did talk about that, how much symbolism there is in this mural, but I'll finish my point on Envy. So it seems like Envy was the one. That's why Envy looks like that. Those are all the souls of the people from Xerxes. So Xerxes was ravaged in a night by Envy. And it damn near looked like they opened up a portal and sacrificed like all of those, all the people into the portal for a Philosopher's Stone. Okay, let me take a lot of that back because now that I look at this, Right, they opened a portal. So I've just been watching clips of the episode back again. They opened a portal, right, which we've just found out from this episode that by performing actual human transmutation of deconstructing, you know, your own body with the soul intact, because they said, right, we figured out we can't transmute a, a body, you know, with a soul that no longer exists, you know, like their mother, like Izumi's child. But Al, excuse me, but Ed is like, if I transmute my body that still has the soul we can open the portal and then when ed is saying right who who used the mural or, or whatnot or human transmutation to open the portal it had to have been hohenheim right 
that's that's who we thought it was all along but the way ed was talking to envy kind of makes it seem like it was envy did that did it but now i'm thinking that hohenheim or father has opened the portal destroyed xerxes to make the philosopher's stone of envy and that's why envy is the, the way the envy is with all of the the faces and the souls of the people from xerxes on it i, I feel like that's kind of what it wants you to think at, at this point about what happened and all of the the symbolism on the mural uh pretty much saying I, i'm not a big symbols person like all this stuff and all this writings that were like on the door and, and truth and stuff but pretty much the gist of it was as ed explained that hohenheim is trying to make himself powerful enough to surpass god like this lion swallowing the sun symbolizing the philosopher's stone i'm really curious so it seems so, so ed said okay so we're trying to recreate the destruction of xerxes in a mistress so i'm not, not sure how close i am to what the actual goal is like true immortality or something that i talked about in my discussion last episode but clearly xerxes wasn't enough maybe he didn't create envy from that philosopher's stone maybe envy was already there i forget how long ago the whole xerxes thing was but apparently that wasn't enough so a mistress is the next goal so the same thing is going to happen and ed is saying look he's using you homunculi to recreate this destruction but, but i still don't know what the goal is and look don't take all of this with a grain of salt i'm just spouting out everything that i'm thinking about what could lead into what and whatnot i don't expect to be right about any of this it's just how i'm feeling about where we're at right now but envy does imply that he knows what the goal is by saying if you get us out of here i'll tell you anything i mean you can't really take that like envy's going to follow through with that right so i, I kind of skipped a little bit of, about the portal stuff because so much was going on but ed basically realizes through all of this that he can open the portal by performing proper human transmutation but, but they need to, to pay a toll, right? Like how it was Ed's, um, one of Ed's limbs, I can't remember which one was for the portal and which one was for, for Al. I think it was his leg was for the portal, right? And his arm was for Al. But they need to pay a toll to open the portal to which Envy says, let's use some or all of them. I'm assuming it's just some of the, the human souls still inside Envy from Xerxes. Initially, I thought it was the Philosopher's Stone, the way Envy, like, stuck its tongue out and the Philosopher's Stone was there. And I was like, what, isn't that going to kill Envy? But no, the souls, that makes sense. And the whole spill Envy gave about how desperate Al is, excuse me, how desperate Ed is to see the souls that Envy has still as human because Ed wants to believe that there's still humanity within Al. To which I believe we know at this point is true. Like Al retains his humanity, he just doesn't have his body. And that's the thing. Um, Envy saying these souls can never go back to being human. But we know Al can, especially with the way the episode ended. And Envy says you have to use logic to determine what a human is. Don't let your emotions decide. Which I now understand as these souls can't go back to being human. Therefore, I guess what Envy's saying is they're not human anymore. But Al can that's why he still has his humanity it's different in this situation so don't let your emotions decide pretty much saying well i know you still care for these souls and whatnot but they're done you know i guess you could compare it to nina and alexander as a chimera they were done and then they perform the act ling makes a very clear reference to how alchemy looks like they're praying uh, which is obvious, but I don't think it's something they've drawn attention to. Interesting that it comes from Ling, who's from Xing. I wonder if that'll come back at some point. But Ed gets to work, um, transmuting, and we see everyone start to deconstruct who's inside the portal. So Envy is in, inside the circle with Ed. Presumably so the souls can be sacrificed as the toll for opening the portal. And when Ling steps inside, you see him start to deconstruct, which... Once I started seeing that, I remember that's what happened to Ed and Al when they went into the portal the first time. And they did uh, bring it back up again in the episode, I believe, when Ed was talking about how he could be nourishing for Al's body as well. And then, and I think, and then Ling also says, this is what happened when Gluttony swallowed us. So it was the same sort of thing going through the portal, deconstructing. A really nice little nod to Ed's character, staying true to himself, saying thank you to the souls as they're sacrificed as the toll for the portal. And then as Ed is going into the portal, we see the truth again. 
clearly with Ed's arm and leg. And I'm very curious as to if perhaps Izumi's or part of Izumi's internal organs are somewhere in there as well. So I have talked about this a few times that I felt like this might be what is happening to the truth. Or perhaps it's just purely symbolic of this is where Ed's arm and leg is. It's just very interesting and a fantastic cut away to as they all jump into the portal, Alan Gluttony standing at the door with where they're saying Hohenheim or father, I know, I'm pretty sure the same person, it's not confirmed, is behind the door. And as they open the door, it cuts back to Ed dropping into the truth in front of the door that's there. There's just fantastic construction of that scene. I really enjoyed that. And there was two doors in there this time. I remember the first one. And I imagine when the arms come in and, and take Ed through, which is like, I think what happened in the second episode of the show, that's taking them back to reality, right? This other door is very interesting. And then we see the person sitting in front of the other portal, the other door. And my initial reaction was that it was Ed. Just because Ed was there, I thought it was symbolic of, of like his body or something. But I should have clued on to the fact that how skinny the body looked. Like it, it's Alphonse. It's Alphonse's entire body that's been in there the whole time. And, and true to what they were talking about a while ago about how Perhaps Ed is also nourishing Al's body. I mean, that could very well be the case. Al's body might have completely crumbled away if they weren't connected in some way, like they, they said they might be before. But he's, it's still there. Because perhaps Ed has been supplying him with like the sleep and the nutrients that he needs through their connection when they got intertwined through going in the portal. And Al's body is in there like, I can't go unless I have my original soul. And which to me just says they need to get Alphonse in there his soul in there and then we can get al back that's how we get his body back but that doesn't seem very simple to do right now because of everything else going on outside of uh, this whole situation with al being with gluttony about to meet father and as this is probably one of the craziest parts of the whole show for me it just filled me with just just everything as ed is being pulled back presumably through the portal to back to reality and alphonse is still stood there you know, and he looks really sad when he sees Ed leave, like, damn, like, I get it, that's so tough. But, but Ed has been pulled through the door, the door has closed, and he's gone. He said, no, I am, oh! That hits so hard, and the outro music starts to come in, and he's like, I am coming to get you, bro. You wait, I am coming for you. Like, that's all that Ed needed to see, that Al's body is there, he needs his soul, he can leave. That's all he needed to know to fill him like with any more drive that he needed to actually get this done. Oh, I just, I just watched it again. It's just the, the weight for me and, and the way he's like pointing and they've drawn it so well. Just an incredible scene. I can tell like I'm having Attack on Titan things. Like I could just talk about that show all day and I'm feeling like that with this. I just want to give it all of the attention that it deserves. I know a lot of you really enjoy that. The really long discussions and, and I do too. And ultimately I want to be creating content that I'd love to watch. But I can understand that this is not for everyone and some people just want to watch the, the reactions to the show. But I'm just going to, you know, pour my soul out, <laughs> stay true to myself and just give like these kinds of moments and episodes the attention that I feel like they deserve. Okay, at this point I've talked about literally everything I think I can, but there'll always be next episode to talk about things as well. Another insane episode, so much information. The show is just so different than it was like three or four episodes ago. You know, I love, I, I just love that. The, the build up has been absolutely worth it. But I think I'm gonna leave it there for this one, take a little bit of a break and then go straight into episode 27. I'm really feeling it right now. So thank you all so much for watching. If you made it through the whole video, the whole discussion, please leave a like and continue to leave your feedback and comments down below. You know, I always appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next episode of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood.